So somebody's going to try to tell you tonight that you can't learn everything you need to know about running a company from watching a television show. They're going to say you need books and you need education and you probably need mentors and I'm going to say bullshit. All you need is to sit on your butt, pull up Netflix and watch West Wing. This is easily one of the best shows that's ever been on television. I'm glad you guys have seen it. That's going to make this more fun. And I, I could share with you guys 50 or 60 lessons that I've learned from watching West Wing, but since we've got a little bit of time, I'll just share a couple. These come from one episode called Hartsfield's Landing. You can watch that episode if you'd like and find out if I'm full of shit. Uh, but this first scene that I'm going to set up for you, the president is dealing with a crisis between China and Taiwan. Uh, at the same time, he's playing these chess matches with some of his, uh, some of his senior staff, and, and they kind of mirror each other. And as the conflict in Asia comes to this astounding end, Sam Seaborn says to the president, I just don't know how you do it. And the president looks at him and he says, you have a lot of help, you listen to everyone, and then you call the play. So he's telling us that it starts with the people. Uh, when, if you're running a business, you can't be an expert in every single thing that you're going to have to deal with in your business, but you can hire experts, you can trust those experts, you can surround yourself with smarter people than you, and you can listen to these people. And then when you've got these people together, you can call the play, you can make the decision. And, and once you call that play, you've got to be ready to stand behind your decision. You guys have got if you're leading a company, if you're leading an organization, you've got a team of people that uh, are depending on you and the decisions that you make. They, uh, they've got wives, husbands, dogs, mortgages that are depending on what you do, so there's some gravity to these decisions that we're making. And then after you stand behind that decision, you've got to stand behind your team. When things go well, you've got to be ready to celebrate your team. Let them celebrate. Give them something to belong to and some meaning. Uh, if somebody's pointing a spotlight at you, you need to be pointing at the individuals on your team that made that happen because it wasn't just you. And then when things go wrong, you've got to be the first one to take the fall. Uh, you wouldn't be a very good leader if when somebody screwed up on your team, you just let it slide and didn't do anything. But, but that's what, you do all those conversations behind closed doors. Publicly, you've got to be the umbrella that protects your team from the shit storm that happens when things go wrong. And they're depending on you to do that. Uh, another random quote from the show is, nothing's not his fault in the Oval Office. Just like there's, nothing's not your fault in your business, uh, or, or if you're leading an organization. It, it all ends up coming down to you, although you've built this team around you. And this uh, proverb or, or saying thing that we, we use all the time in our business basically says, you know, I could do things faster if I didn't have to explain it to the 25 people working with me, but I don't want to do it fast. I want to go far, so we'll go together. The second scene I'll set up for you guys, uh, he's, the president is playing chess with Toby, and they're in the midst of re-election. Toby's the communications director, and they're trying to be really careful about what the message they send out to the people is. They don't want the president to seem too smart. And uh, the president a, uh, a, is a PhD, speaks four languages, and it would be difficult to make him seem as stupid as these two. And, and so Toby doesn't like this idea. Toby wants the president to stand strong. He wants, he wants the people to know that they're electing someone who's smarter than them to make those decisions the rest of the country can't. And he tells them, you're already the president, so stop acting like it. As a young leader of an organization, sometimes I think to myself, how would the COO of a big software company handle this situation? And I have to remember that I'm the COO of a big software company, and I have to handle that situation. And I'm not always going to do it right, and that doesn't mean I shouldn't continue to learn from people that came before me, and they did it better than me. But things have to be distilled through my personality. People are looking at me. Your, your company is going to go through... Uh, going to go through hard changes, you're going to have hard conversations, you're going to have, uh, and, and all of those things have to come through you. Your team's not looking for Steve Jobs or the latest blog author uh, to distill these things down to them. They're looking for you. You weren't put here in this leadership position by accident. So uh, one of the biggest, some of the biggest mistakes that I've made uh, in leadership have been taking things that I learned at a conference or something that I just read in a book and getting really excited about it and coming back to work and then driving it straight down to my team. And, and it blows up in your face almost every time. Those things got to filter through the culture of your company and through you as a leader. Uh, you're a human. Your team is going to support you as a human. And if you do these things that we're talked about, they're going to support you when you screw up. And you're going to screw up. So it's important to show that if you're some power-hungry leader uh, in front of your team, they're going to assassinate you when it comes time and you mess up. So... Basically, the moral of the story is you should all go watch Netflix. The entire thing is on, uh, or West Wing, the entire thing is on Netflix. Uh, it's an amazing show. And then uh, I wanted to thank Ty Carlson, who's here, for the amazing uh, eagle that was in the background. He drew that badass eagle. So thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.